You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. And the madness, uh, of course, continues in the world of Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie. Both have uh, pled guilty, of course, to the child abuse charges. We've been talking about that. Uh, Jody Hildebrandt, we're about to take a listen to the press conference from her attorney after she pled guilty uh, over the holiday break and what he has to say about uh, just that to refresh your memory uh, Ruby Frankie pleading guilty uh, her business partner uh, and some of the charges just so so disturbing of what she was making her children do it starts out tame I guess I mean it tame is in the wrong word for this and it just gets worse wall sits carrying boxes full of books up and downstairs not because they needed to move books but because you know, just make the kids do it go outside don't have any sunscreen on get Horribly sunburned and blistered, uh, denied food, punished when they're trying to seek and drink water secretly, being isolated from other people. When they tried to run away, their feet bound with handcuffs and ropes and pulled behind their bodies, forced to lay on their stomachs. Ruby Frankie kicking her son while wearing boots, holding his head underwater, smothering his mouth and nose with her hands. Uh, convincing them or trying to convince them that they were evil and possessed. They needed to repent to avoid these punishments. Uh, The list goes on and on. Uh, Cayenne pepper and honey to dress wounds that were inflicted on them by uh, Jody and Ruby. And uh, when you add uh, what we've learned about Ruby's or uh, rather Jody's uh, charges, uh, it it gets even worse. Uh, That includes having uh, the young girl who I believe is nine, uh, repeatedly jump into a cactus. You know, the stuff good parents do. Let's go to that press conference uh, outside of the courthouse from the other day and hear what the representatives of Hildebrandt have to say. I haven't had much to say about this case prior to today because I didn't feel it was appropriate to do so until today. Ms. Hildebrandt, my client, has pled guilty today to four counts. She has done so because she takes responsibility for her her conduct in this matter. Um, Her guilty pleas, she decided to plead guilty before Ms. Frankie entered into her plea agreement or agreed to cooperate with the state. She has pled guilty because she wants She did not want these children to have to testify. She takes responsibility. And it is her main concern at this point that these children can heal, both physically and emotionally. We look forward to sentencing. That's all I have to say today. There are people all over the world that are coming out and saying that Jody Hildebrandt has destroyed families, that she has hurt a lot of people. Has she seen this kind of the backlash that's happening, and what does she have to say about it? I'm not going to have any more comment, nor is she, uh, at least prior to sentence. Thank you. When will the sentencing take place? February 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Terms of the agreement, as far as how that pertains to sentencing, and is there a specific range that the court has agreed to? She's she's agreed to a prison sentence, four counts consecutive, the same as Ms. Frankie. Exactly the same as Ms. Frankie. In Utah, there's rumors about uh, consecutive sentences. How how long could her sentence term be then? Could all four be consecutive together? Ultimately, it's up to the Utah Board of Pardons. And I'm not going to speculate at this point how long she might serve. Thank you. I'm Washington County Attorney Eric Clark, and I just have a brief statement that we'll that we'll read, and then we'll be happy to release this along with the signed plea agreement to anybody that requested the date. So this morning, Jody Hildebrandt pleaded guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse. She will remain incarcerated awaiting sentencing, which will occur on February 20th, 2024. As part of the plea agreement, Ms. Hildebrandt agreed to be sentenced to consecutive as opposed to concurrent prison terms for each of the four counts. One of the toughest things we ask victims of alleged abuse to do is testify in a trial against their abusers. We are pleased that in this case and in Ms. Frankie's case, that won't be necessary. That both defendants will be going to prison without having to hold a trial. We're grateful to the multidisciplinary team that investigated this case. We have great law enforcement officers, case workers, Children's Justice Center staff, both in our area and in Utah County. 
Additional information about Ms. Hildebrand and Ms. Frankie's cases, including redacted investigative materials, will be available upon request 30 days after sentencing of both defendants. For further information, please refer to the statements defendant, the statement of defendant in support of guilty plea that was filed with the court this morning, and, and we'll be happy to make that available. Thanks, you guys. Why were two of the counts dismissed? So, in, in any plea agreement, um, there's always some back and forth in that. And, and in this instance, two counts were dismissed. And um, and what they what Ms. Hildebrand agreed to do was to not contest that it, for each of the terms they'd be prison and that those went consecutive as opposed to concurrent. Um, but why not all six? Well, so so I think that's a fair question. And that's what, as a prosecutor, that's what you deal with every time you handle the case, right? Is um, if, if our plea offer had been, there is no plea offer, plead straight up to all six, then the defendant has no incentive to go to trial. And, and, and we're not afraid of trials. We don't want to avoid trials. Trials carry some risk in that you don't know what the outcome is going to be. But, but more so when you have victims that, you, that are having to go through the trial process, that's difficult. And so if we can get a result that is, that is similar. Um, in, in Utah, there's a, the maximum penalty for second degree felonies is 30, is 30 years. So if we had 15 counts, the, the maximum amount of time would have been 30 years. And each, each count carries a one to 15 years. So the, the difference in reality between four counts and six counts we, in our calculation, wasn't enough to justify asking victims to go through a trial. Part of uh, Ruby Frankie's plea deal was to testify against Jody Hildebrand. That was like a big part of that plea deal. Does that mean that is irrelevant now? She will not have to testify against Jody. That, that's what I anticipate, yeah. Um, when it comes to, uh, prosecutors always have to uh, determine who they think is the more culpable party in co-defendants. Who do you believe is the more culpable party? I, I'll be more comfortable speaking about specifics in the cases after after sentencing and then after th we wait for the 30 days to make sure that appellate time is run. And that's just us being super careful to make sure that, that procedurally we're not doing anything that could complicate a case down the road and, and overturn a conviction. So I'm, I'm not going to get into thought processes at this point. In yellow with KSL 5 News, the defense attorney said that Hildebrandt chose to plead guilty before Ruby Frankie made the decision to plead guilty. Is your office aware of the timeline there and which plea happened first? Which agreement happened first? Um, no, in that I, we, we, we weren't immediately, we weren't talking to both Hildebrandt and Frankie, right? It was clear to us much we we knew that frankie was going to plead earlier than hildebrand thus like frankie's the, the the deal that frankie pled to included her agreeing to testify against miss hildebrand and and also that we would not submit things to the parole board asking that, that she stay in prison for a longer term um so that was in frankie's plea that's not in the paperwork that you guys will see for hildebrand's plea you, in Frankie's case, you agreed to stay neutral for uh, parole, uh, parole board hearings. Did the same agreement happen with Hildebrand or no? No. So there's a, an, a, I know we can't predict the future, but um, so the, the door is open for the Washington County Attorney's Office to go to Hildebrand's parole hearings and say, we believe she needs to stay that's in. Okay. That's a good question. So, so the answer to that is yes. More commonly, um, the prosecutor's office can submit a letter or submit things in addition to the pre-sentence investigation of my declaration parole. Um, but, but there's always the option of actually going in person and being with those hearings also. Aggravated child abuse in Utah is a second degree felony. Do we need to look at these laws in Utah? I hope so. And, and that's something that, that I've been in talks with legislators already about. Thank you. Is that as a result of this case? Like I said, I don't want to get into my thought process on this case until we're further along. Um, but I, I have been talking to some of our legislators. I have been talking to some of our legislators that are open to criminal justice reforms about um, the, the level of, of severity in Utah law. When did those conversations start? 
in the last few months. Thanks, you guys. Um, as far as travel to cases, where does this one rank in your career? Um, I'm not going to get into, again, I, I'm not going to get into my personal thoughts on this until until we know that everything is done in the appellate time is right. Thanks, you guys. Have a great rest of your holiday. Thank break. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a press conference outside of the courthouse where Jody Hildebrandt's defense attorney, Douglas Terry, spoke to local media reporters. Terry said Hildebrandt chose to take the plea agreement before Ruby Frankie did and that she wanted to take one so the children didn't have to testify. Her main focus is for the children to be able to heal. Hard to believe coming out of someone as evil as Jody Hildebrandt. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.